The Small Business Show, episode 383 for Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. Greetings, folks, and welcome to or welcome back to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where we are small businessing through the entrepreneur experience every single week. Sponsors for this episode include iTrust Capital at itrust.capital slash SBS and Bambi at B-A-M-B-E dot com slash small, where you can go to schedule your free trial. We'll talk more in depth about each of those shortly here. For now, back here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. I love that Bambi concept, being able to get an HR company for, for oh, yeah. an unbelievable price each month and get help. I think it's I so agree. Great. And, and I, I, I love what Bambi's been doing. We, they've been a sponsor for a while. I'm totally into that. Yeah. And I trust capital, like being able to have crypto in your IRA with all yeah, the tax cool. advantages. I wish yeah. I wish that had existed for me 10 years ago, eight years ago, six yeah. years ago. That's Two years ago. Yeah. Yep. Six months. <laughs> Six months ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. That's good. It's good stuff. That's great. So you're happy to be back in the States. I know you were traveling. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. We yeah, were, good. we were in Greece. We, we flew to Greece and, and spent a few days in Athens and then boarded a cruise ship to bounce through some of the Greek isles. And then we made it to Montenegro and, oh, nice. uh, and, uh, Croatia, uh, before hitting, Venice and then flying home from there. But yeah, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. I, I it's great. I, I, I'm still processing. Like we haven't even been yeah. home 24 hours, but, but, uh, the place cool. that really blew me away was Montenegro. I, I, oh. I don't know how to put my finger on it. It, it has, there was something about that place. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it was That's cool. No, it was an amazing experience. Yeah. It was like, Great family trip, lots of good memories and all of that as well. It was, it really was, was smooth travels. Um, That's terrific. So, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we were just having a conversation. I, I want to talk about cost savings and, and expenses and stuff today. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, taking care of cutting costs with keeping valid, keeping the value of your business strong. But, but you and I were just having a conversation before we started. We, we both watch the Apple, you know, uh, announcements yesterday at the Worldwide Developer Conference. And I made the comment. I want one of those new MacBook Airs and how I felt that my MacBook Air should really have an expiration date on it. And your two year old MacBook Air should have an expiration date. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, and and you made, I thought it was very poignant. You're like, well, maybe things should have that because you miss out on so much now that uh, everything's interconnected and, you know, it's not like you're, you buy something and it lives alone. I mean, I just bought a new car or leased a new car through one of our companies and, you know, the app, downloading the app at the dealership and getting connected to the car is is part of the deal. Same with the refrigerator these days. Yeah. So I, I, I wonder if, uh, you know, maybe there's an opportunity there, either the, the manufacturers coming up with something like Apple does, where it's like, hey, it's time to get a new phone and we'll give you credit for your old one. Does, you know, uh, should other companies be modeling that or does some entrepreneur come up with something that interjects themselves between the manufacturer and the consumer to do that. Well, kind of interesting. yeah, I think it's, it's a consumer mindset thing, right? And, and certainly yeah. there, there needs to be a uh, responsibility in terms of uh, not just filling up landfills with, with unused, yes. unused crap. Right. But yeah, it's gotta be this circular kind of thing, right? Yeah. There Where, needs to be some yeah. sort of re- recycling thing going yep. on, but, but that, Aside the consumer mindset of I'm going to buy this and it's going to last forever. I don't know that that's good for us anymore. And and I, 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 I may, I haven't thought about this for a long time. Like I've literally thought about this for 10 minutes here because it came up in our pre-show conversation. So yeah. I, you know, a week from now I may feel very differently, but, but this, but it's worth having this thought exercise on the idea of, okay, is it good for us in our heads to say, Yes, this is going to last forever. Or is it is it better for us to say to just be realistic right out of the gate and say, okay, this thing that I just bought, I'm going to expect it to last for ten years, five years, three years, whatever whatever the item is, whatever it it whatever makes sense. Some sort of efficiency thing too, right? Exactly. Because look at your refrigerator, right? You buy a refrigerator. It used to be. 
that it would last forever. And the same with a washing machine or a dryer, like the, the quote unquote boring home appliances, the dishwasher. Right. Yeah. And we we had you know, we bought our house with our, our dishwasher in it. Right. And and then the, the the thing went nuts like it got it was one of those things that had the 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 sort of soft touch panel on it to get it started. You know, you pick, pick the mode or whatever, click start or whatever. And that okay. soft touch panel went went berserk. It got to the point where we felt like we had to be like spies in a James Bond movie to, <laughs> yeah, to figure out the code <laughs> to get the dishwasher to go. And it changed every day. And so finally, we we ripped the thing out and put a new one in. And it was like, oh, my gosh, we should have done this five years ago. How many times do you replace something? And after you replace it, you say we should have done this five years ago because the new dishwasher was quieter. It was more efficient energy wise. Like right. Probably use less water. Even, it, you know? it uses I'm less sure. water. Right. All of those yeah. things. And the same thing is true. I have two refrigerators in my house right now that are 25 years old each. I guarantee you I would save money if I replaced both of them pretty quickly in energy alone. Right. Not, not to agree. mention yep. the convenience of a better design and, you know, all of those things, because these things wear out, but not necessarily in a way that would make you decide I have to replace it today, even though I know I, I'm sitting here telling you I should be replacing both of my refrigerators. Like without question, I guarantee within five years, I'd be saving money. Probably two years I'd be saving money because those things are like they're 20 plus years old. They're they're not. Yeah. You know, they're not efficient anymore. The technology has has leapfrogged them. And, I, you know, I, I just think we need to change our mindsets. P perhaps again, just for the thought yeah. exercise, I'll, well, it, I'll it, argue it, it, this it side so and I might yeah. argue the other yeah. side in a week. But I, I think yeah. we need to approach things from a a disposable or a recyclable mindset as opposed to and i'm going to keep this forever mindset yes i i like it i mean there's definitely something there right uh, there's something there here. are some, i don't know what it yeah, is there's some pitfalls to it the, right. that, that have to be some some issues that have to be addressed i i get that yep um it, but uh you know there's something like I, I I mentioned my shotgun. And I joke around. I you know I tell my wife I'm like you know I've had this shotgun for ten years. I've hunted. I probably shot I don't know a few thousand shells through it. Maybe sure. or more. It, you know could be dangerous. Maybe I need. I, maybe I should get a new shotgun. You know right. jokingly, but maybe that's true. Maybe uh, you know manufacturers should put something and say hey you know there's a there's a uh, in the case of a shotgun. Look you've shot uh, I don't know. 20 or 3,500 shells and we recommend you replacing it or, or whatever. It's kind of an interesting, uh, yeah, and I think it's an opportunity. Yeah. There's well, kind of there's that too. Right. But you know, I mean, I, I'm looking here in my studio, I have my podcast machine and all that. And then right next to it is my, my drum set, one of my drum sets. Yeah. And, and I think about, okay, so should these be replaced? Well, I mean, they're, they're pretty stand They're, they're static things, right? To a point, it's a shell, with lugs on it that the rims screw into and the uh, rims hold the head in place. Like that's it. it. Right. Okay. But the mounts that they use change over time and the newer mounts are better and hold better. And the positioning is better, right? They don't fall while you're trying to play them and all this stuff. So parts of the drum set do become obsolete over time. Now the question is, do yeah. you want to replace those parts and put new hardware on, or do you just replace the drums? There is something to be said about the sound of an, a, a specific instrument. As a player, you get used to it. You learn how to work with it. It evolves over time, especially if it's wood, right? You know, because there's glue in there and the glue and the wood's going to settle and preserve in a different way. And the glue is going to settle and preserve. And so you get this sound that is over time truly becomes unique to that one instrument. Yeah. And you it learn how to play it. It's seasoned, if you will. Right? It's seasoned. Right. Yeah, seasoned. Yeah. So there are some things where it might make sense to keep it. But again, I'm changing the heads on these things fairly regularly because you have to. You know, I'm I'm fixing different pieces of them because different pieces that may or may not be related to the sound. Although it's arguable that everything that's screwed onto the drum is related to the sound because that's how physics works. Right. And yeah, the same would yeah. be true of a guitar or a piano or anything like you you are doing things to these that they do change over time. They evolve. And, and so like, yeah, thinking about things as being replaceable 
It's interesting. I, I yeah, yeah, it is. yeah. There's yeah. there's something to it. I, there is I, I something to it. Th- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fascinating. But uh, you know, uh, what are your ideas on it? Are you in an industry that that could take advantage of this, uh, or is this something that uh, you know? Are we just you know, there's nothing to it. Uh, feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. Should everything have an expiration date? It, and I think that expiration date, if the answer is yes, it's something that needs to be in the consumer's head. Like the day you buy it, you know that this is a five-year item. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's some kind of cycle. Maybe, maybe like, you know, I, I like Samsung appliances. Maybe they have it built in. Hey, you know what? We're going to reach out to you in this time and we're going to give you this much credit to go buy a new one. And we're going to do this and you're going to get this new feature. And uh, I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, my they, L- maybe they, yeah, my LG TV, it's two years old now. Um, I think WebOS will only update for two years before that stops. Um, and yeah. And then should it be replaced? Uh, maybe. I mean, you know, yeah. look at the the prices on TVs are way different today than they were five oh, years ago, ten yeah. years ago, right? Absolutely. So it, Absolutely. you know, it's not yeah. unrealistic to say, okay, yeah, we we're gonna have to fork out that money every whatever it is, two, three, four, five years. But should you keep the same TV for twenty years? No, probably not. It, you know, not yep. in this, yep. not in today's world, not with all the tech yep. that changes yes. in your television. Yeah, I have like a, a seventy-two inch um, big Samsung yeah. in in my kind of down you know our living area if you will we watch movies and stuff and uh i started to look at i go wow there's just a lot of shadows in there and i I walk in costco and i see these big oled uh 80 inch that are uh, that are cheaper than when i bought this uh you know the 72 and this is almost nine years ago that i bought that one oled is so much better than the led that you've got yeah, for sure. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're telling me, I'm going to mention to my wife when we're done with this today, yeah. I think we need a new TV. <laughs> you, de- you know, you definitely need a new TV. Yep. Yeah, we we skipped right over LED. We we held on to plasma yeah. as long. My plan was, oh, yeah. and it, it worked. Oh, cool. I loved plasma. Well, our, the way our living room is, is it's, it's a very, we have a wide viewing angle. So LED never would have worked for me because it, it you, you know, you get to the edges and it looks like crap. And so we had plasma and my plan was to hold on to plasma as long as I could until I could afford OLED in, in the room and, and it worked out. So, you know, there you go. But yeah, the OLED screens are amazing. Hey, um, I do want to have this conversation about how to cut costs while preserving value. Me too. Uh, the next thing that I want to do, if it's all the same to you, Mr. Shannon Jean, is to talk to everyone about our two sponsors for today. Yeah, let's do it. All right. By now, you've probably heard all about cryptocurrencies. You might even already be investing in them. But did you know that you can invest in cryptocurrencies through your retirement account? That's right. With our sponsor, iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies from a crypto IRA and get all the same tax advantages as a traditional IRA. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in over two dozen of the most popular cryptocurrencies, and unlike the stock market, you can buy and sell 24 hours a day. The iTrust Capital platform is easy to use, and it only takes a few minutes to create your account. Setting up an IRA is free, and iTrust has no account opening fees and no monthly fees. It's time to start taking control of your financial future. With iTrust Capital, you can get all the tax benefits of a retirement account while investing in crypto. And being a small business show listener, sign up today and receive a $100 funding bonus when you open and fund an account. To do that, visit itrustcapital.com to start investing today. That's itrustcapital.com. Taxes and conditions apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment with risk of loss. iTrust Capital Inc. does not provide legal, investment, or tax advice. Consult with a qualified legal investment or tax professional for that. And our thanks to itrustcapital.com for sponsoring this episode. So you run a small business, right? But I have one question for you. Who's running your HR? If the answer is, I'll figure it out myself, or honestly, no one, remember that one employee complaint can turn your world and your business upside down. That's why you need our sponsor, Bambi. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses like yours, so you can automate the most important HR practices and get your own dedicated HR manager. First, Bambi's HR Autopilot 
automates your core policies, workplace training, employee feedback, all that stuff. Then your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the more complex parts of HR and guide you towards compliance available by phone, email, or real-time chat, whatever you like. An in-house HR manager can cost you up to 80 grand a year, but with Bambi, your dedicated HR manager starts at just $99 a month. I know, $99 a month, right? There's no hidden fees. You can cancel any time. This thing, Bambi is amazing. What they're able to do, especially for this price, you're going to love it. And this is why Bambi has received thousands of five-star reviews on Trustpilot, and their customers are four times less likely to have a claim filed against them. You run your business, let Bambi run your HR. So go to Bambi.com slash small right now for your free HR audit. Spelled B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash small. Bambi.com slash small. And our thanks to Bambi for sponsoring this episode. All right. So you had this idea, Shannon, that we need to look at our businesses sometimes. Sometimes we have to, but other times it's just a good idea to. Ask the question, how to cut costs while preserving value. That's right. I I like this idea. You know, the the first thing that came to mind for me is what is what let's define value in your business. And and we're all going to define it differently. Right. But if you're going to preserve it, you better know what it is because you're going to be taking other things away (laughs) potentially. Yeah, that's true. So. What is valuable, and I think you can ask the question two different ways. One is, what's valuable to your customers, right? And then the other thing is, what's valuable to your business? Because you know where you want to get your business in the future. And that may or may not be valuable to your customers today. Hopefully, it'll be valuable to future customers or your current customers in the future. But you want to look at the question both ways as you head down this path so that you know what you, you know, what's the non-negotiable part of this? What has to be preserved? Because that's that's baked into this, right? If we're preserving yeah. value, let's define right. value. And that's going to be different for every business, right? It I, is. And it, it's a good point. Like for me, I, you know, I have this big list and I'll, I'll tell you that the, the last thing I cut, I'll tell you what it is first. And that's employees. I, yeah. I always fight to protect the people that work for me. They've always been my most valuable asset. Um, and I'm all for things like, hey, let's not hire for a few months or sure. six months. Let's see where I, I, I'm a, as, as listeners to this show know, I'm, you know, a crazy optimist. I always think our best years are ahead of us. I still do. But I think the immediate future is far less uncertain. Um, I think there's a very good chance that we're rolling into a recession here that's to uh, yeah. let off some of the steam. Um, if you've looked at the markets and you look at housing and interest rates and um, there's a lot of go- a lot of things going on with you know fuel prices. I'm in California and average you know cost of gas is over six dollars a gallon right now. Um, it impacts every single thing you could imagine. So looking at what you cut cut costs and things, the last thing for me is employees, but I have a question for you, Dave. I want yeah. to ask you. Yeah. Because I'm always shy. Or I hesitate to uh, talk about bad news. It's one of my my uh, weakest points when I talk to employees because I have this optimistic thing. I don't, I don't want to talk about bad news. But right. should right. you have a conversation with them about what's going on? I mean, they know. They see it, right? But, hey, we're going to have a recession. We may have a recession or a slowdown in the economy in the next year. How could that impact our business? And um, you have to talk with them, right? They have to know what's going you on. You have to. Your mindset is, right? I, yeah. When, you know, I'm the, the easy example is to rewind about two years, maybe two years and two months uh, to when lockdown started with the pandemic and, you know, okay. all of that stuff. Businesses were closing or, you know, long before PPP or any of that stuff saw the light of day. Everybody knew that we were having a problem, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. There was, that's you right, know, yeah. so so the elephant was in the room, and we were talking about it already. But it hit me, you know, about a month into things, and it might not have been a month; it might have been just a few weeks. But it was. It seemed like 
it, things had been going on a while. Like, it, you know, it wasn't days into this. It was OK. OK, here we are now. Of course, me as the as the business owner, I I get to see everything. I get to know everything about the health of the business. Right. It, it's yeah. like I have to know that whether I want to admit some of those things or not at the time is different. <laughs> right. But I, yeah, yeah. I know it. I'm aware of these things, whether I choose to ignore them or pay attention to them or whatever. I know them. And it hit me one day. I knew that our companies at that point in time were all solid. Like we were going to be able to keep everybody employed for six months while we figured out what was going on in the world. And I knew this. Okay. And then suddenly it hit me one morning. I'm like, wait a minute. I've known this and I've been fully aware of this for like a week, it, you know, cause I dug in, I'm like, all right, if revenue slows and this happens and that happens, you know, what are my options and what, what, bad, like what difficult decisions might I need to make? And so I, I went sure, through and I did sure. it all. So I, I had done this exercise and realized, okay, we're going to be fine for a little while. Like who knows how long this is going to go, what, what impacts it's going to have. We don't know, but uh, we can do six months. No problem. And then it hit me about a week after I did all that. that wait a minute. My employees have no idea. They don't yeah. have access to the same information that I do, so they can't do this exercise for themselves. Yeah, and you want their help, right? And they're buy-in on right. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. so I, yep. I called the staff meeting and I said, hey, I want to let you know. And and it was not, you know, acknowledging that things in the market were bad and it it might negatively impact the business long term, but we don't know. I, I hate having those kinds of conversations because like you said, I, you know, I'm an optimist like you. I like to just deliver good news. I did have yes. good news, but it was good news in a, you know, in a crummy situation. It was like, yeah, we don't need to to do this and we don't need to fire anyone and we don't need to make any changes right now, but we are not going to be hiring anyone at that point either, you know, yeah. and they all, every single one of them had already been thinking about it. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah, You're right. And they all said, oh, yeah, we talked about this, which is an interesting thing to hear, right? That your employees talked about the business without you present. It's like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. There's a back channel I'm not privy to. <laughs> uh, right. And they said, we talked about this and we all would have been willing to accept like a, you know, a 20 percent pay cut in order to keep everybody on board and all of this stuff. And it's like, wow, that's fascinating. I said, I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. But sure, we don't have to do anything like that now. And they were all very thankful to just have that transparent conversation. So I think you're right right now with this recession looming or some change, some correction looming, whether it's going to be actually a recession or not, we'll find out. Right. But you know, they, there's, there's some correction looming. I think it is realistic to have that conversation with your employees. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Get, get them on board. There's yeah. no shock later. Like, Oh, we're insulated from it. Talk about it. Don't be doom and gloom, but have a conversation just like we are right now. Yeah. And just a matter of fact yeah. conversation. That's really yeah, what it like needs it. to be is just yeah. being yeah, honest, being transparent. Yeah. 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 I like it. Yeah. And I have this thing. I, I, and I've heard this before. I listened to a lot of podcasts and they're just this, this 10% rule, this rule that, uh, you can always cut 10% from budgets from your expenses without even feeling it. Sure. So you giving your managers, your supervisors and anyone involved in, in managing costs, asking them, Hey, come up with a plan to cut 10% of your budget. Uh, not saying that you're, you know, we, we may need to do it right now, but we want to have this plan in place. If we start seeing certain things on the horizon that we could go through and, uh, and, and make those cuts. So, you know, and, and I do kind of agree with that. I, I think there's, there's fat in every organization, right? And yep. as you, as you grow, it gets harder and harder to be lean and, uh, you know, so I, I do like that 10 percent rule. And I, and I think you should ask your people or yourself how, you know, looking at things, how would we cut 10 percent? Because I think it just happens and people just pick up the slack and you don't even notice it. I like it. You don't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And now and like you said, that way it gets you have buy in. And in addition to just getting buy in, which is one byproduct of, of hopefully byproduct of, of this conversation. The other part is you get ideas that you're not going to come up with, that your employees are going to come up with that are going to potentially help the health of the business. And that's also a good yeah. thing. 
Yeah. Like, to your point, they're having conversations without you. Yes. <laughs> so let, you know, get and have, have them educate you. Hopefully you've hired some really smart people that are, you know, uh, much better at you than, cert, you know, doing certain things. And yeah. uh, it, it's, it's important. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's great. And I, I think that, you know, this 10% thing, that's real easy. Uh, but I also think it's, you, you should do this on a regular basis, depending upon how often is up to you, but auditing your expenses. And when I say auditing all of them, because the small ones, and I've, I made this mistake. I still make it. You're like, Oh, that's only 10 bucks. That's only 50 bucks a month. And look at all this, stuff. but it, the small ones really add up and they're often ignored because you don't, you're not auditing these expenses. Right. I, I hate it when I have to spend, you know, 30 minutes or even an hour dealing with, cutting out a $50 a month expense. I, oh, yeah. like, it feels like a waste of my time, it but, does. <laughs> but <laughs> I know that a, it's not when you multiply it by 12, right. Over the course of a year yeah. and B that doing that exercise and preserving that mindset of let's make sure we're aware of all of these expenses that, like you said, it, one by one aren't going to change the nature of your business, but in aggregate, absolutely will change the nature of your business. And just being aware of those and and having a, a practice of thinking about them, not every day, not every minute of every day, because then you'll never get anything done. But having this practice of not ignoring them, I think it really is really helpful. I like that idea. I yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. And, and things like, you know, we've been we've talked about. um that I, I forget the name. You're going to remind me though, because you know it. Uh, the credit card fee rate tracker. Uh, rate tracker. Oh yeah, That's man. You want to use that? To it's free. Yeah. So yeah. right. And so you're looking at okay, what's the exchange rate that we're paying to take American Express and all these other you know yep. uh, affinity credit cards and what's that costing you? Very easy to do it. You know, check that stuff. You know, and bank fees. You shouldn't be paying any bank fees. It, yeah. it, you just shouldn't. You if you are, you need to talk to your banker or find another bank. And, you know, and maybe if you've got debt or a credit line, maybe it's time to renegotiate those things, right? Oh, that's either, a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Either maybe getting a better rate or maybe an increase because it's going to be, if things go south, it's going to be harder to get money next year. It's already getting tougher right now. Yep. But if you can get your bank to say, oh yeah, you have a, whatever, $500,000 line of credit. Yeah. We'll give you an increase based on, you know, your assets or whatever to seven fifty. It's going to be easier to do that. I believe now, now, yes. Then next, next, you know, Q1 or Q2 of 2023, I think things are, are going to be a little more dismal for uh, getting money. I, I think that's right. Yeah. Well, it's always easier to get money when you don't need it. So yeah, yeah that's right. Get, that's right. get those loans in place now, increase them if you can uh, yep. so that, so that you've got those cushions in place for whatever might happen down the road. Yeah. Yeah. This is it, I, I want to talk more about these specifics because I like specifics and, and okay, yeah. actionable things. But I also I, I want to zoom out a little bit and ask these questions like looking at look at your contractor, your third party expenses, the things that you're outsourcing. Right. What are you good at internally that you could do either in place of those instead of those? It, you know, things that you can cut a cost while while still preserving the value of whatever that brings to your business. Right. So and maybe maybe saving an employee, too. Right. Exactly. You're like, hey, yeah, it's going to slow down. You're going to have time to do this. Yeah, that's a really. Good yeah, yeah, you're going to. Right. There's going to we're going to preserve if, if the goal is to preserve everybody that's working here now. Great. Let's look at all of these things. Who thinks they can do that? Right. And yeah. if they can do it 90% as good as a as a contractor and they have the time in their schedule, it's worth looking at that, right? Thinking about your business and your processes from that standpoint, what are you spending cash on? Okay, can we not spend cash on that? Does And, and if we don't spend cash on that, what does it change about our business? I, I think that's a good question to ask. Yeah. And then the other question, right. and this one... I'll tell you, you know, we started Backbeat Media before the dot-com bubble burst. And we had no freaking idea how to run our business. But we didn't need to know for those first yeah. 18 oh. months because there was so much money being poured at internet ads that we were just order takers. We were idiot order takers. That's really what we were. Uh, 
and we were nice guys. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, making yeah. connections. Yeah, stuff, we yeah. made we went to work every day. But but yes. in retrospect, we were we did not understand our business, uh, but we certainly collected a lot of money in those first 18, 24 months, whatever it was. Uh, I, I will give you a a metric that should help explain what happened to our business. We were charging anywhere between, let's say, 12 and 20 dollars cost per thousand for a, an Internet ad. But every time you view an ad, you know, every thousand of those views is worth somewhere between 12 and 20 dollars in, in that particular market in those days. Yeah. That's what we were charging okay. uh, after the bubble burst within a period of a month. It went from, let's say, 12 to 20 down to one to three. Wow. Right. So like a, yeah. a, a right. Our, our, a 90 percent reduction in the value of our entire product base. Now, wow. yeah, thankfully, we weren't though we were idiots. We made the excellent mistake of not spending all the money that we had made. So we had a cushion. Right. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was a great yeah. mistake to make. Yeah. Uh, and so we sat and we looked and we said, OK. We now understand what our business is and we have a minute to breathe because we're not taking nearly as many orders as we were in the past. So let's look at what we do here. And w the question that we asked ourselves, because Greg, my, my partner at the time, Greg Snyder and I are both efficiency maniacs. And we looked at this and said, what can we automate so that it we don't need to hire more people to service more customers, because if our, we have a if we have a 90 percent reduction in the value of our product, well, then it means that we need 10 times as many customers to earn the same amount of money. Now, we never quite got to that point, uh, at least not in in, you know, in that phase of the business. But that was the mindset was, OK, how do we what can we automate so that we can service this? We can service the same amount of dollars without adding staff and we were able to we built us this huge filemaker database that the business still runs on today uh we automated a bunch of things but the one thing we didn't automate we automated a piece of it but by and large the one thing we did not automate was customer service that was the sacred cow for us it was okay yeah. because we know we we need to be able to go be those nice guys that are making connections and people want to work with us and people trust us because now the trust has been sapped from the market, right? <laughs> like it went from, yeah, that's good. But, Smart. you yeah. know, and so that was, that was the, that was the task that we assigned ourselves was, okay, what can we do? And we had time to, to build these systems and, and lay these foundations. And we had some capital to do that as well. And we were able to make it work and, and the business obviously survived. It's still here today, but if we did not do those things, it would not have survived. Um, I think, yeah, it's a great story. And I think one of the things that to tease out of that is automation, you yeah. know, automation and technology is just a great place to uh, look at how you could save costs, not necessarily eliminating someone, but, uh, you know, automating and systems that you use in your business that, uh, that could save you some money. I think yeah. that's important. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I talked about fuel, yeah. Uh, fuel prices are impacting everything. So if your business, you know, ships things, it's time to talk to the, to the carriers because, you know, UPS, FedEx, DHL, whoever you're using USPS, if you're doing enough volume, you can, you have a rep, um, they're, it, they're already doing fuel surcharges, but the way you can offset that and your, your reps will do this is they can give you better rates and sneak it in. So if you're seeing a 10% increase in fuel surcharges, you know, go push for a, 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 you know, equivalent percentage discount in your shipping rate, especially if you're, you know, using overnight grounds a little tougher because they have a harder time discounting it because it's just a bloodbath uh, in a commodity business, but right. overnight and priority shipments time to talk to them. And it's also time to look at what your incoming freight is costing you and are the vendors that will, cut your deals on shipping. Can you buy local? That's one thing to really look at is, oh, we used to buy our boxes from this huge box company and had a guy walk in years and years ago one day and said, hey, I'm right down the road. You know, you can come get your boxes anytime. And I was like, ah, you're not going to be able to meet these prices. And he said, well, let me see. And, and funny enough, and this is another indicator that we live in a simulation. This guy's name was Bill Warehouse. 
<laughs> and he was in the <laughs> and he was in the box business. So I said, okay, Bill Warehouse. Uh, and maybe it was an alias just to get his name in the door. I don't know. Sure. But it worked. And so he's like, Yeah, I can meet these prices. And he was smart because sure, over time, you know, you you increase a little bit. But it, not only did we save on fuel costs and delivery, but we didn't have to stock as many boxes and I could send guys down the street literally to go get a shipment. And he just like, yeah, tell me what you want me to keep in stock and I'll, and I'll do it. So uh, looking local for suppliers can really save you money. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, no, that makes um, sense. Cause they're, they don't have to ship to you. So th there's not yeah. that cost. They don't have to absorb that cost. So it, yeah, it can be split right. down. H how about uh, taking a look at your business from the standpoint of what else we have these assets and I, I don't know what the assets are because every business has different assets, yeah. but are you yeah. utilizing all of the assets that you have? And almost certainly the answer is going to be no. So what could you do with those unused portions of your assets? Is there, is there a new income stream that can be generated there? I don't, you know, yeah. I, right. Yeah. You're totally right. Whether it's, uh, you know, I don't know, web services, you've got extra server something or this or that, or, and I, I have a story about this. You might be surprised to hear. Um, we had a bunch of warehouse space and we were using the space, but I had a guy down the road that said, Hey, um, we're parking our trucks outside and we're having some theft problems. How much would you pay me for at the end of the day, if I could just pull all my trucks in your, in your warehouse? And, you know, imme immediately I was like, well, you know, I don't know. I was just a young guy. And he's like, look, he's like, I want to pull 10 trucks in there. Let, let me pay you 500 bucks a month because that's going to save me. And I, and I was, yeah, absolutely. Sure. So six o'clock, this guy, they would roll in and they would just park right in our aisles. And, you know, we opened, we were early. They came. I didn't give anybody a key. I had a warehouse person that there were a couple of them that, you know, came in and one came in early, one stayed late and it was 500 bucks. You know, it was awesome. That's great. That's great. That's extra. That's a year. five hundred free free dollars a month. Yeah. That's so it. look at your yeah it, super you, smart. You know, I tr yeah. Lo look at your storage. Could you condense part of your warehouse and let somebody store things there? Um, you know, do you have extra capacity in one of your employees, administrative people? Can you have? Do you have enough? Like we had a you know, pretty big like call center of people taking you know uh, orders coming in, and as we. I'm really going to date myself here, but as we shifted to more and more people comfortable placing repair orders online and doing this kind of thing, I didn't need them all. Right. And so we were constantly looking for new ways to do it. Well, you know, um, coming up with a ways to share those or work share job share with those people would be really smart. Yeah. That, well, yeah, that, that makes me think looking at your business, what are the things that you are good at for yourself? Right. Forget about your customers. Not don't forget about your customers. But for the yeah. moment, focus on you. What have you needed to figure out how to do internally so that you can run your business? Whatever that might be. Right. And I'll call this the Dave Hamilton mistake because I've done I've done this and ignored the benefits so many times. I just don't want to count. But the, the my my favorite example is that, you know, back in 1999. Yeah, it would be 99, December of 99. I wrote right. a content management system. Oh, yeah. Right? Because you, yep. WordPress didn't exist. Like, th th there, there was no, there was one, but it was like a hundred grand. And so I, I met with uh. these people. I, it, the stupidest part, Shannon, I went and I met with this company and they, uh, they, I was like, look, you know, we're publishing a news website. You have this content management system that's built for this. I, like, it's perfect. We should work together. Like, yeah, it's a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, that was how they wanted to work with you. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think you want to work with, do, do you understand? Like, yeah. I'll show you my books if you want. Like, I don't yeah. know that this business will ever gross a hundred grand. Thankfully it did uh, in, in time. Yeah. But you know, at that point in time, it was like, well, we're getting a couple hundred bucks a month here and there for stuff, you know? Right. right. And we were just getting started. But I'm like, this is like, the, and I, I remember sitting there, they just happened to be based in Austin. So they were like five miles from me. So I went and sat with them. And I remember saying to them, you know, there's a lot more people out there just like me. If you were able to cut your costs down to $1,000 instead of $100,000, no I doubt. I bet you'd get a thousand times the number of customers and you'd make more money in the end. You've already built the system, right? The, the hard work is done. You're marketing it the wrong way. And I remember yeah. saying that to him because I was frustrated. 
And and they were like, yeah, well, you know, pound sand, buddy. So I did. Yeah. And then I went home and I wrote my own content management system. And I didn't listen to the advice that I had given to <laughs> them. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah, but it happens to me so often, Shannon, because I because I'm that guy. Right. I get frustrated. I say I'm going to fix it. My I'm going to do it myself. Right. But but I know that a lot of us entrepreneurs do the same thing. Right. So I didn't I, I, I knew how to program, certainly. But the languages that I used to build that system, which was PHP and MySQL, I didn't know those languages the day that I started with a blank page. And a week later, I had our content management system built. And and, it, and we ran on that for probably 10 years before we moved to third party stuff. If I had been smart enough to take a look, to listen to the, the advice that I had literally given two days before to someone else, we might have had a whole different trajectory for our business. Yeah. So thinking about those yeah. things, like what problems have you solved for yourself? And if you think you're the only one that needs that solution, you're silly. And you're even sillier if you think, well, this gives me a leg up over my competition, so I'm not going to share it with them. No, you're not going to share it with them for free. You're going to share it with them right. for a profit. And it's totally fine. Oh, well. Yep. Yep. Well, <laughs> and, oh, well, and this is, and again, I'll, I'll jump ahead a bit. I have a couple more things I want to talk about, but you're not jumping ahead way... for anybody but yourself. I'll just remind you of that that's we're true, all here real time yeah. for this conversation. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, a, a, a great way to cut costs is actually to create new revenue streams, right? Yes. With your existing infrastructure. So all the stuff you're talking about, now's the time to get creative, even to the point where, as I was taking these notes, I was like, you know, if you're, if you're really good at cost cutting, why don't you offer that expertise to other companies? Yes. Hey, we'll come in because one of the things you talked about sacred cows a little bit. Yeah. Well, I've had this problem where people just, oh, no, we cannot cut that, cannot cut that. So having my bookkeeper and then eventually my accountant do this audit for us, an outside person that would be like, hey, how do you justify this? How do you justify that? It, it really helped me. So you could possibly sell that service to somebody else. So, so think about it. Or at the very it's least, the even if you can't sell it to somebody else, even if you're, I know you could folks, but even if you're not confident selling it to somebody else, find another small business that maybe is, you know, either a friend of yours or someone that's not a direct competitor, just so yeah, everybody feels comfortable and do it for each other. Look yeah. at each other's businesses and ask those questions because you're right. We won't look at our own sacred cows, whatever those might be, but somebody else doesn't, they're not sacred to them. It's only you. <laughs> and and they have a, a the ability to be more objective just like you do for them. And you can really maybe help each other out, you know, in that yeah. regard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't tell you how many times, I mean, you and I do it for each other all the time. So oh, yeah. well, why are you doing that, man? Well, it's because I... Cause I, I, cause it's important to me. Okay. Well, why? Well, I have an yeah. emotional attachment to it. And as yeah. soon as I hear myself say those words, it's like, okay, yeah, thanks man. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, you gotta do your thing. That, that, that's part of it. You yeah. Know, you can uh, justify it that way. Yeah. But, uh, better to have an outside pair of eyes sometimes for sure. I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, I, one thing, you know, a couple little things. That, uh, yeah. If you, if you got two or three here. more good pieces of advice for people, let's, let's do a, 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 a rapid round here. Yeah. 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 Yep. Here we go. You know, one of the things is don't buy new, buy oh, refurbished I like or, it. uh, right. It, you always look for the deal. I, I, I haven't bought a new computer in decades and I always buy refurbished. You, I get it, you know, with Apple care or whatever, yeah. some deal. There's always deals out there for stuff you want, you need to run your business. Uh, whether it's, Warehouse equipment, a forklift you can buy used with a warranty, computers, whatever it is. Don't it, buying new, in my opinion, especially for business stuff, is just a, it's just a waste of money because yep. it immediately loses a tremendous amount of value when you get it. The other thing I would say is, if you're good, your cash flow is really good, and you're paying your bills on time, you you need to start asking for discounts if you can pay those invoices earlier, because as cash tightens up in the, in the economy here and people are struggling a little more, they're going to want to give you something to get your cash. So you might get a, you know, a significant, you know, any bit to say, if I pay that, that net 30 invoice in 10 days, uh, is there an incentive to do that? If you're not already getting those things, ask for it. I like that. And, and if someone says no, then ask, okay, cool. Well, can I pay this, uh, you know, n net 90 or, or can go. I, yep. or can I pay it, you know, net 12 months, 
with no interest. If you don't want the cash yeah. up front, are you good with that price as long as I pay you, you know, 12 installments, one, one per month? Because Absolutely. I, I've, I've actually found myself in that position where somebody was like, no, I, I won't give you a, a cash up front discount. And I was like, okay, well, I, you know, can I have terms? Let's, can I do 24 months with, with no interest? They're like, yeah. Like that seems insane to me, but well, sure. it depends on your cash position, it's, right? It's, it's exactly it's, right. Yep. They, yeah, so they were in the position got, where they wanted to yep. book that revenue at that level. And so yep. it was better for them to take the cash slowly so they could book the revenue at the full price instead of saying 80% or something like that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And then on the same type of thing, we're talking about being transparent and talking to your employees. You want to be transparent with your suppliers, yeah. your contractors, and let them know. It's kind of a warning shot. Yeah, things are going kind of nuts. How are you guys doing? And and at the same time, you kind of interject like, yeah, this is tight, or we're going to be looking to cut costs here and cut this, that, and the other. And you'd be surprised at how that can really wake up a, a supplier or a contract. So, hey, uh, let me look at your account and, and see what I can do. Yeah. Um, same thing, you know, all your, all your people, whether it's from an insurance, you're paying all kinds of insurance, get that looked at everybody. You need to start assessing and looking for discounts. So, and, and I'd love to hear your ideas. What, what did we miss? You know, go to the uh, small business support group, business co slash Facebook. Come on over there and talk to us there. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. This is great. I like this. I liked our little lightning round at the end. This is good. Me too. Uh, feedback at businessshow.co, folks, is where we want to hear from you. Or like Shannon said, over at businessshow.co slash Facebook. And, uh, yeah, check out our sponsors, would you? Make sure itrustcapital.com so that you can uh, you can start investing in cryptocurrencies in a tax-advantaged way. Bambi.com slash small to avoid all those HR headaches. Mm -hmm. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week.